I'm on my roof. Come on up. If you don't already know me, my name is Donald. My channel is Soft Roading the West. I do exploring and camping in the backcountry in my Nissan Frontier. Today I'm going to look at the Jackery Solar Generator 1000 Pro. Now this is a package that includes the Jackery Explorer 1000 Pro and a set of four Solar Saga 200 solar panels. That means 800 potential watts of recharging power going into the 1000. Now this particular setup is not necessarily for everybody, both in terms of the bulk and in terms of the budget. But if something like this is potentially useful for you or you're looking for information on this package, I'm going to take a look at it and tell you what I found and tell you what I think. <laughs> Full disclosure, right up front, uh, I have been partnered with Jackery for a couple of years. That said, I do not accept partnerships where I am obligated to say anything in any way. I do not submit my videos to Jackery for review. My longtime viewers and subscribers know that they can trust me to give them my honest and impartial opinion, even when it comes to a sponsor's product. I'm actually pretty excited about this. This unit addresses uh, a number of the shortcomings that I found with earlier Jackery products. I'll talk about those in just a minute. This is a 1000 watt hour power station. It does come with USB and USB-C outputs, uh, three AC ports, and a standard 12 volt outlet. So one of the first things that I noticed about the Explorer 1000 Pro is the fact that there's no longer the sort of awkward built-in handle. It's a nice, boxy shape with a handle that folds down. It's as easy to carry as the other handle, but this square shape makes it much, much easier to integrate into however you want to integrate it in your build. Another little detail that I was really happy to notice was the fact that the display stays on when you turn it on. That was a complaint I had about the new display in the Jackery 1500. It would come on, light up, really bright, colorful display but then would shut itself back off relatively quickly. And often I want to be able to keep watching what's happening with the input or the output for a period of time. The display here stays on for much, much longer, and when I'm done, I can also just simply switch it back off. Another new detail I've noticed about this design is the fact that the front panel is only outputs. There's the USB outputs, the AC outputs, and the 12 volt output. The inputs are now all on the back of the unit. And while I can see a certain logic in separating the inputs and the outputs and the front face of the unit is now very cleanly just output, what I did realize is that having the inputs, either whether it's the AC input or the 12 volt inputs from a vehicle or from the solar panels, um, that means cords sticking out of the back, which makes the unit a little less easy to sort of nest in some place, integrate some place, because you have these cords sticking out the back. And that may also make it harder to swap out whatever cord you're using to bring power into the unit if you've got it set up inside of a build, kind of the way that I like to do. Now speaking of inputs, one thing that I noticed is that the power cord is a surprisingly heavy gauge wire. And I'm guessing that has to do with the fact that this will accept a much, much higher amount of power coming in for recharging, for very, very fast recharging. We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. Another thing that I like about the power cords that come with this versus my older Jackeries is the bright orange color. They really stand out among the countless black recharging cables that I have to carry around with me and sort through whenever I need to recharge something. This, I know, these are my Jackery power cords. And an additional detail about the AC recharging, so if you want to plug it in in your house to recharge it, there is no longer a transformer box that is part of the cord. It is just a cord that plugs into the unit. My Jackery 1500, for example, has this awkward, bulky box that is part of the AC power cord. That makes transporting the recharging cable much, much tidier. And all the different cords that come with this have these really nice Velcro 
ties incorporated right into them, so it's very easy to package things back up for transportation. Now one of the outputs I didn't mention here on the front panel is a light. Now you may recall on some other Jacker units that they've always had a light integrated sort of in the handle over on the side so you could theoretically carry it like a flashlight. This light situated here on the front is actually much, much more useful because you can turn it on and then illuminate whatever you actually need to do you know, especially if you're needing to use this unit and get something plugged in in the dark. This is, this is super handy if you've got this in your tent or in your camper. Easy to reach out and turn that on and immediately have light. And it has a couple of different brightness settings and a flashing setting. In the event of a power outage also, which is another way that these come in useful, nice to have that light right there ready to go. I tried a theoretical power failure scenario and made a pot of coffee using my 600 watt coffee maker running off the Jackery and using the light on it to, uh, to light my way. With a thousand watts of AC output, this will run a huge array of electrical items from household appliances to high powered tools. And that's what I like to see because as a DIYer, I often need to cut down materials that I buy at the hardware store and having a high powered unit in my truck. They'll run, for example, a grinder or circular saw. It's really nice to have that kind of power available to you at all times. Now let's talk a bit about the other component of the Solar Generator 1000 Pro, and that is the Solar Saga 200 solar panels. Now the Solar Generator 1000 Pro comes with a set of four of these for a total of 800 potential watts of recharging power. One thing I really like about the Solar Saga 200 is that it sort of is effectively the same size as the Solar Saga 100 panels that I have been using previously. It's a little bit thicker, but it essentially takes up about the same amount of space in the vehicle. However, it's got twice the capacity. It unfolds into four sections instead of two, with even just a single one of these bringing in 200 watts of power under ideal conditions. Um, is It's a really nice, tidy little package. Now these come in uh, protective case and inside the protective case there's a zippered pouch which has the cable that you need to hook it up to the Jackery. The kickstands on these units I notice are uh, a little more rigid, a little more solid feeling than the ones that I had on my older Solar Saga 100 panels. Now these are a little on the heavy side. I mean clearly there are twice as many solar collectors here so it makes sense. There's a little more bulk, a little more weight. But if you do have the space to transport this package, the ability of these four panels to recharge this fast charging unit is pretty remarkable. A common element in overland builds is to have some sort of solar panel built onto the top of a vehicle. One advantage to having portable solar panels like this is that you can park your vehicle in the shade, place your solar panels, wherever you need them and also continue to move them and optimize your solar collection rather than just having something flat sitting on top of a vehicle and your vehicle sitting in the sun on a hot summer day. Now in my little overlanding setup, I am probably unlikely to carry this whole package with me when I'm out camping and overlanding, at least when I'm moving on a day-to-day -day basis. I could see using this whole setup if I was going out to base camp someplace for two, three, four days in the same spot. The way I see myself actually more likely to use this setup is at home in a power outage situation. And so I decided to test these right here at home in the one place where I could actually collect enough sunlight and that was up on the roof. So I got these all set up fairly early in the morning before the heat of day came on. So the sun was relatively low in the sky. The Jackery Explorer 1000 Pro has two 12 volt inputs in the back, but this package includes two adapters that allow you to plug two of the solar panels into each one of those inputs. It was very straightforward to get this all set up, everything plugged in, everything just simply worked. Okay, it's 8.52 a.m. We're starting at 15%. You can see that the sun is relatively low in the sky, just based on how far those shadows come out. With some encroaching shade from the tree there, I shifted everything over and also changed the angle up a little bit. 
So they're a little more directly pointed to the sun and that's um, uh, bringing in more power already. Okay, it's been an hour and we're at 70% already. Now getting 600, about 680 watts, 677 watts coming in. All right, so it is 1036, about an hour and a half since we started, and uh, we have hit 100%. It stopped accepting input from the solar panels. And yeah, an hour and a half basically to bring it from 15% to 100% uh, on a 1,000 watt capacity. That's fast. Like any of the Jackery power stations, the Explorer 1000 Pro can be recharged off a vehicle 12 volt outlet. The recharging is not nearly as fast with this method, as the input power is limited. I also tested the recharging speed plugged into standard household AC. Okay, so it is 5.36 p.m. I ran this back down to 15%, so we've got a sort of comparison to what we did with the solar. We are getting, oh, look at that. It's pulling in 750 watts. So it's really fast off of house power also. Well, that's not gonna take long then, is it? All right, it is now seven o'clock p.m., so about an hour and a half, and we are basically there. One of the comments I receive often whenever I talk about any of my Jackery products is the fact that there are other units out there that you can buy for less money or there are ways that you can DIY stuff, put components together, build your own system. And I'm sure all that is the case. If you are handy and comfortable working with electrical components, you could put your own system together. Not everyone wants to do that. I can't speak to other products. I don't have experience with them. What I do have experience with is the Jackery units that I've used, which have always delivered and have always been reliable despite the tons of abuse that I put them through in my rough, dusty travels through the backcountry. One of the things I really like about running a power station setup like this versus building a dual battery system into my vehicle is the ability to take it out of my vehicle and use it in my home, for example, in a power outage scenario. Also, in the case of simply changing up my setup, which as you may be aware, is happening again soon, this is all gonna change again. If I had wired in some sort of a dual battery system into my setup here, I would have to completely disassemble all of that, re-engineer for the new setup that's coming on my truck. Running a power station based electrical system makes it very simple and easy to move from setup to setup, or even for those of you who have different vehicles. It's nice to be able to just simply move your electrical system from one vehicle to another. I've watched friends of mine working on their builds, trying to engineer and wire up these dual battery systems. It's definitely doable, but there's a lot of things that you can do wrong. I love the fact that I just don't have to worry about it. I just plop this in my truck and it works. And when this changes up, I can take it out, plop it in the new setup, and it's gonna work. So overall, I was actually more impressed than I expected with this whole package, the super, super fast charging and some of the design upgrades that they've made to this power station. I'm pretty excited about this unit. I think I may actually use this as my main unit instead of my 1500 now, even though the 1500 has larger capacity, the super fast recharging of the 1000 Pro is very, very enticing. Okay, I will put a link in the description below uh, so you can go take a look at this on their website if you want to look closer at some of the more detailed technical specifications. Thanks for watching.